afternoon to everyone. Uh, as ma'am mentioned, my name is Kajal. So basically, today we will be talking about our organization, Salam Balak Trust, and how we are working with children, how we are spreading awareness to the society. So if I'll be sharing about the organization, Salam Balak Trust, basically it was started in 1988 after the success of Mira Nair's film, Salam Bombay. In this movie, the main role were acted by the real street children and the movie got nominated for Oscar and won eight prizes in different categories. So inspired by the movie Mira Nair's mother, she thought of opening a place where children, they can come, they can stay there, they can play, they can get education. So she started one of the open shelter home at the New Delhi railway station. When she started, she started only with 25 children and three staff. But recently, Salam Balak Trust is working with around more than 11,000 children. Uh, we have seven shelter homes in total where children stay for 24 into 7. Apart from that, we have 10 contact points. Contact points are the daycare shelter home, basically, where children they stay only for the daytime. In the evening, they, they go back to their respective places. Apart from that, we have a mobile school bus. So basically, we have opened the mobile school bus so that we can spread awareness. We can decorate the bus nicely. That bus can go to slum areas. Their children, they can get attracted. They will come and they can ask, what are you doing? There, we can provide them non-formal education. We teach them uh, child rights. We have counselors who talk to them. And uh, we provide them nutrition, medical facilities, a lot of things. So from there, they get motivated and they're like, OK, we want to join a proper shelter home. So in the beginning, it is hard for us to take any child from the street and put them in a proper shelter home. It's like a jail because when they are on the street, they have a lot of freedom. They can do whatever they want to do. Like they can take drugs. They can uh, go out at night. They can use phone. They can do whatever they want to do. But inside the shelter home, we have some rules and regulations which we have to follow. You have to go to school. You cannot take drugs there. You cannot go out at night. If you are going, you have to go with one staff. So it's for the safety of the children. So it does take little time to uh, for them to understand. So that's why we have the open shelter home so that they can know what the organization is doing. They can come to the open shelter home for a few days, for a few months or a few weeks. Once they are ready to join a proper shelter home, then we can enroll them there. So this is how from the slum areas we motivate them. So once they start coming to the open shelter home, the daycare shelter home, the first thing which we do is we provide them non-formal education. Once they are ready with that, then we enroll them in school. Because I feel school is the one thing by which they get motivated. When they start going to school, they see other children. Okay, they are not living that life. They are not taking drugs. They are dreaming what they want to do in future. So this is how they get motivated by other children. And then they come back to the staff and they tell us, I want to join a proper shelter home. Because in, inside the shelter home, we have to stay there till we don't turn 18. From 6 to 18, the age criteria is there. After 18, we get rehabilitated. Like, for example, I got rehabilitated. I completed my course of air hostess, flight attendant. And right now I'm waiting for my passport to come. So this is how, whatever the child wants to do, the organization helps the child. So till 18, we have to stay inside the proper shelter home. So in the beginning, absolutely, there are few families which do not allow their children to go and join the proper shelter home. Because again, the children, they are their source of income. They ask their children to go on street and beg, sell something. So it is hard, like we have a proper team who convince the family, who convince the children. Um, so when they are on the street, lack of awareness is there in terms of they don't know that we have free education. I can go to government school, I can study there. Or they don't know that somebody is there who can take care of them. Because when they are on the street, they only get, uh, they, all, they only hear abusive languages because they do all the wrong things like stealing someone's phones, taking drugs picking up the garbage. So when they start coming to, to the open shelter home, there when they get love from the staff or from other children, then they think, okay, I can be something in future. Like I can be an artist, I can be an actor. This is how they get motivated and they're like, okay, now I want to join a proper shelter home. So now my colleague, uh, Junaid, he will continue. 
Well, my friends, my name is Junaid, and I'm also from Salam Alakta City Work and Salam Alakta actually. So now I'm going to tell you about the street children street life. Everybody knows there is a lots of street children street life going on on the street. So basically, there is a lots of reason behind it. So just I just uh, you know I'm going to share with you only a few major reasons. You know, the main reason is poverty. Drug addict parents, stepmother, stepfather, parents who don't love their children and child feel very lonely. In some cases, children want education. <clears throat> Even Kajal told you education is free in India. But people, they are thinking, you know, in like villages, they are not getting good education. They think in city, people provide, you know, like they can get like a good education in the city. So that's why they move to the city for education. And also we are facing, you know, like children in india lost it you know every seven minutes one children lost in india that's the data of the railway child line children also lost while uh, you know celebrating festival as you know we are celebrating lots of crowded festival like durga puja moharram ganesh chaturthi so these kinds of festival children lost and also you know children lost while traveling you know our train network is a very big and busy Sometimes, you know, a family have three, four, five children and sometimes they carry the child hand and they walk on the platform and sometimes they lose their hand. Children lost on the street. And also we have natural tra tra tragedies like earthquake, floods, people, they lost their, you know, agriculture and also their houses. They had just hope to reach to the biggest city to get better education, better opportunity, better life. So once they come to the cities, in cities, there is lots of problems they have to face. You know, first on the street, children and people, they have to fight first for the survival. Once they reach, they start surviving on the railway stations, markets areas, temple areas, and they start working as a, a beggar, rack picker, pickpocketer, stature, and also they start working just like a, a working in this on tea stall, small restaurant, do shoe signing, cleaning car, and many others work. So by doing this work, they earn just only few kinds of money and mostly they are involved in drugs. So on the seat, people, I mean, children who are living on the seat, they are they're all involved in drugs. That's called glue. They are sniffing glue mostly. Whatever money they earn from the seat, they spend on drugs and also entertainment and also different ways. It's just like I can say, like prostitution and other way. Yeah. So, as Kazal, Kazal already told you. Sorry. No, continue, continue, please. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, there is a, also like uh, children have problem like they are facing because of the lack of the knowledge, lack of awareness. So Kajal told you, we are just work on the awareness and also when we get any children from the street, we motivate them, we provide them shelter. Once we uh, get the children, we also try to find their family. Once we find their family, we send them back to their family and we check the condition, condition is good back, then we send them back to their family. And also there is a lots of government scheme. We try to aware through that and we also try to connect them. Like if, if you talk about the Ladli Yosna, yeah, and also Jandhan Yojana, and there is a lots of like uh, disabled disabled people. We also connect to that, and we try to contribute something to our society. So we try to change our society through this this work, and um, we are conducting too. That's called city work. So through the city work, we also try to sensitize about the children, about life, about education, everything. Yeah. So that's also community based too. We are doing. That's really, that's really a nice work and I really appreciate and I really applaud for those who come from those, those kind of situations and came at this level. So, so which also inspires us to know about how in, in the current scenario and in life, in current life, how to in, improve or increase our skills and all these things, which which makes like you all a great uh, idol and all. So let me ask a, a few questions where, uh, where our viewers are asking, what have what has been the key factor in making you reach 
this level. So I would like to hear about this. So I would say that the key factor is uh, like the children and the organization. Like our trustees, they are so much motivated. They like they are like if we face downfall also, they never lose hope. So our trustees, our staff, they are working for children in a way that, um, for example, any child is their own street. And a lot of time parents are like, they abuse, they say bad things, but our staffs and our trustees, our team, they are not losing hopes because they just want to encourage more and more children and they want to like end this poverty thing from the street. So I would say our staff and our trustees is the main key. That's really nice. Uh, so That's really how do you manage such a large amount of kids? Is it easy or difficult part? So I would say that we have different shelter homes, as I told you. In different shelter homes, we have coordinators. Then we have education in charge. We have social worker. We have night staff, medical staff, store in charge. In every shelter home, you will be finding these. We have two shelter homes for girls and five shelter homes for boys. So in that, what happens basically, children, they go to, to their schools and they come back. We have basically staffs for everything. And what happens, then we have a head office also in Pahargit. So every week meeting happens. In that meeting, they sit together, they discuss what is the problem, how should we handling this. So in that, the conclusion come and this is how they handle. And apart from that, we have accounts team. So basically, by meetings, by with the help of all the coordinators, by all the different different like accounts team is there, volunteer team is there, city walk team is there. So everyone is working together. This is how they are able to handle the a big crowd. So my next question is. Now, after turning 18 and moving out of the shelter home, do you find it difficult to survive on your own or do you feel empowered? Absolutely. Like when I came out of the shelter home, it was very hard for me because for a girl personally, when we are inside the shelter home, we get all the privileges. There we get like everything, food, nutrition, a place to stay where we are safe. But when I came out of the shelter home, I had to manage everything by myself. This is what the organization wanted me to learn. So they were paying for my training. They were paying for the place where I was staying. But again, it was hard for me to adjust in a normal world. I used to travel by myself. I used to pay like the play, uh, rent, then manage everything in that particular money. So I was learning. So it was hard for, in, for a year. After that, I managed. And what about you? Yeah, actually, when I was in the shelter home, I feel very happy because there is everybody is, you know, uh, working for me. So easily I can get everything, whatever I want. But after some time, you know, when I rehab, when I get 18, so it's very difficult for me for me to cook my by myself to arrange everything. Like I, I have no idea how to cut the vegetable, onion, like these things. So it's survival is a very different, different, like a shelter home and also practical you know like alone so it's a very difficult but timely you know i learn from the, my friends from someone like staff who living nearby me so they help me to survive and now you can see i'm living alone right now yeah so it's a difficult you know but easily we can uh, you know like improve ourselves with the help of the you know staff member and also friends so after eating you know, what happens basically like the organization they never leave us alone if we are out also, if we have any kind of problem, we can directly come to the head office. Mm -hmm. We can contact any of our staffs. If I'm having any kind of problem, they are always there to help you. We have the coordinators of the shelter room where we were staying. We can coordinate with them. We can call. We have a lot of staffs with whom we can uh, contact if we have any kind of trouble. So they never leave us. They are just teaching us how we can survive by ourselves. We should learn how to like adapt the outer world also. This is what they are teaching us. That's why after 18, uh, as we are uh, adult, so they tell us stay out and, but the organization helps us. 
yeah till the time 25 organization always uh, you know standing behind of us and try to pushing go and success your life that's really good because time because as we know that there is a say your time is a good teacher and a good people also help a lot to improve and enhance ourselves and in time to time i i know the time always teach everyone how to live and how to to survive in this world so let's go to the next question um, do you still see yourself at the burn of value vulnerability or feel a part of the mainstream i'm sorry can you repeat the question that's you do you still see yourself at the burn of vulnerability or feel a part of mainstream so right now uh, we don't feel because the organization taught us everything they made us that strong they taught us everything when we were inside the shelter home so right now we don't face oh. one thing yeah. i would like to add you know actually when i was on the street basically i also used to survive on the street right so when i came to the organization so before i never went any kind of school when i went oh. over the isa you know children they are study and from there you know i changed myself i thought you know you no know, i have to do something i i need to uh, have some education because mostly time i used to read newspaper by the picture not by the word so from there they like that from that time you know i start learning from the organization and still you can see i'm conducting tour in this place like here and in future i want to be a tour guide so that's a opportunity you know like best thing for me and whatever a child needed organization provide here even anything whatever a child need that's really good so there is a one one question from my heart that um, what the future aspects of of your 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 organization and your your all the experience how you are going to you um, use those experience in a future so that our society is going to improve a lot basically Because what's your I vision know, okay yeah what's basically your what's your vision so our mission our vision is basically on if we will search it <coughs> on street in delhi particularly we have more than 50 to 60 street children so there are a lot of street children we have this organization we have a lot of children in the shelter homes but still if you will go on street you will be finding a lot of kids who are on street who are still begging who are still taking drugs and all so our aim is basically to finish this from the street and enroll children in school or provide them a place where they can be safe where they can they can dream of so this is what the organization aim is and we want to provide like every child education and we want to provide every child a successful life because when they are on street awareness is the one thing which is there after that we have to motivate them every time wherever we see them we all know these street kids get the abusive environment from their home and even from the society the streets they are walking so a part of your organization salam balak uh, where how can we motivate these such children and can provide a secure environment okay in providing secure environments again if you see something on the street if something bad is happening with any child you can go there you can ask the uh family or you can just tell a child you can basically motivate the family that we have government facilities you can send your kids there in the morning they can study once they will start studying they can help you once they complete their education you can just motivate them motivate them and telling them about the government facilities which we have government they have provided a lot of schemes for those children yes. who are women but they, they have lack of awareness that's why it's happening yes i do i do agree with your statement but there are homes their parents do not agree with their studies like they say like we don't have money we can't send our kids to the schools so how can we motivate them so yeah, yeah. so uh you know uh, there is a lots of people like there is honesty and honesty both kinds of children 
like own street means the children who live without any back support alone so it's easy to convince these kinds of children but the children who have family like off street their family mostly they try to making from the child self so in this case you know it's a very hard to convince them all right so social worker from the organization we go every day to that person and they tell them about best basic way you know benefit of education okay and we try to convince their family first and we also do counseling because we cannot forcefully we can take them in the shelter because force is also illegal so very polite way every day we go over there slowly slowly we try to take them in our contact point and contact point is the, is the first place where we try to motivate children through the toys through the everything easily children they start you know coming by themselves to our place then their family also feel safe their children is safe on our place then they say yeah you can take our children to shelter home and slowly slowly we try to motivate them and try to take them in shelter homes so it's hard absolutely when children they are staying with their parents it is actually hard because parents they don't say yes so for us also for the team also they have to go regularly to those families every day they go to the places they motivate them yes. so for us also like you are asking how how can you help and how can you motivate this is what the main thing is that you have to go and motivate them every day you have to tell them about the things that these are the schemes you can at least send them to government schools in the morning in the evening you can ask whatever you, like the things which you are doing but in the e- morning at least they can go because we have government education which is free if we will enroll a child in school they will be getting some amount of money also like that would be in their bank and after 18 they'll get it so by all of these things by telling these things you can motivate their families you can motivate a child that just go to school there you will learn how to read how to speak properly and when you will grow up you can take care of your family like you can go somewhere and you can do a job but if you will stay on street if you will do these things only when you will grow up you will be like your parents and you cannot provide them a good life to them also and to you, yourself also so this is how our staff also they go every day and they motivate the families they motivate the child it is hard for the children who are with the families but then this is how we do and one thing i would like to add you know what we are also conducting too and we are working on the uh, you know like on the footpath on the street and some family who have like children and they are surviving on the street so they they know us we used to survive on the street and some children they also maybe they also want to change themselves like me because i am conducting tour on the like with the foreigners so they say how they you like we are speaking english maybe they will change themselves so that's the way also we motivate them so we have a different different way to motivate them yeah so that's also motivational uh, tour we are doing hello really that's was a really nice thing so i have a next question uh, being a part of a city walk tour guide so what are the some hurdles or some issue which you are facing right now right now so as such uh, we are not facing any kind of issues because the program is very smooth people foreigners people from outside sometimes people from india also they come and then we take them on a tour so basically we tell them about the organization what the organization is doing then we tell about ourselves how we came here what all happened and then they go to the shelter home also one of our open shelter home they interact with the children after telling them about the organization after everything if they want to make any kind of like if we have some products if they want to buy any kind of products then if they want to buy any kind of uh, donations if they want to make then we have walk charges by all of these things we basically raise funds for the organization as salam balak trust is a non government organization so funding also happens with city work program so that is one of the program here right now recently i don't think we are having any kind of issues because few guides are there who basically used to stay on the street before and right now they take people on a tour and they tell people from their perspective like how i used to stay on the street and what all happened with me and how the organization helped and what am i doing right now 
this is how we tell people and we are basically spreading awareness about the organization more sure. and more we will spread awareness and more and more the people will also help if they find any child on the street they can just contact the policemen the policemen can take the child to the open shelter homes or any kind of shelter homes and then we have child welfare community also so they also help us like when they find any child when police bring any child to them they allot the child towards the shelter homes so this is how as of now we are not having any kind of problem in the city work program that's that's really a nice thing and i hope in future also you you people don't face any issue and and don't face any hurdles in, in your program so that's real and that's really a nice thing i, I would like to hear some more story about your shelter homes and you uh, and your your city work yeah, tour guide please so would you would you like to share some more story about your tour okay so you want to hear my story or your story story about the organization organization so story about the organization so so we all know about so we all know about your organization and we also feel inspiring also so please please yeah, give give some glances about your story please so basically uh, there is a lot of story in the organization so as kazal already told you we have a seven shelter home two for girls and four for boys oh, uh two for girls and five for boys so basically in this shelter home we have more than 850 children they are staying they are getting regular benefits right now and every year we are working with the more than 11000 children she told you so 70% children we send them back to their family and rest of children we have a successful story if you talk about successful story we have like a uh, vicky roy vicky roy is a very famous photographer i hope you know about him we have a sonia sonia before she used to work with one of the uh, famous fashion designer ritu kumar but right now she start by herself we have a puppeteer kumari she does puppet show here and all over world as well and we have also sudhir you know about sudhir sudhir and also like uh, uh, shivalak raj they both are karate player and sivalak has his own school in noida but the sudhir is a tc karate in the organization and also private school and there is a lots of successful story and there is a one boy with us his name is salman he is not success but he is working in the movie bollywood movie so he has also done seven movie we have rashil he is also photographer we have sanjay he is also photographer we have firoz marle he is also photographer we have a lot so we have also uh, if you talk about social worker we have a santosh gupta sir we have a uh, mm, we have a few more like i, I am not re recognize his name so there is a lot so social worker teacher dancer choreographer and lots of successful story yeah really really yeah. if if yeah, yeah you were saying something Yeah, yeah. Would you like to add something? Yeah. Yeah. So basically, when we stay inside the shelter home, every year what happens? We have a annual play. In that annual play, children they come together from the shelter homes, and then we basically do dance, theater, and combine. And apart from that, we have annual tours also. Annual tour is like every year, children they go to some hill stations like Delhi. and uh, like manali shimla kerala nainital different places so that also happens in the organization and every year uh, children get like athletic meet they can do can you hear me yes 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 please continue please connect yeah i'm saying here children you know like they get lots of opportunity so every year we organize also karate like inter sbt karate championship uh inter sbt kickboxing championship and also athletic program we also provide here so different different uh month different different things we are providing if you talk about them health care so we provide them whole thing even we have a mental health team as well and we have one shelter home that's called asra in asra we have a special child yeah so when we find any kind of children who uh 
uh, who have need like special care. So we provide them that place and we have a counselor over there, especially for those children. We have a special staff member for those children. And also we have a doctor, we have a taking care staff as well. So for different, different way, we are trying to manage this, these things. Yeah. Any other question you have? So as we are running short of time, uh, can you tell me in short, like how you manage all this? Like you only you both started this organization or there were some more people in the initial earlier? No, in the beginning, I told you that Mrs. Praveen Nair Ma'am, she was our founder trustee who started this organization. And we, we are the children of this organization. We used to stay in the shelter home. And recently our aim is something else, but we joined this program because we wanted to improve our English and build up the confidence level. And this is the platform where we can communicate with people. We can interact with a lot of people from different places. So our aim is something else. Like I want to be an air hostess in future. He wants to be a tour guide, like his field is same. So we have different trustees who started this organization and we are just spreading awareness so our work is just to take the tools tell people what the organization is doing how it is getting help and we basically raise fund for the organization that is our work yeah. apart from that we have uh, coordinators we have staffs who works with children who stay inside the shelter homes or we have trustees who looks after us yeah, so we have more than uh, 450 or, uh, staff member right now in the organization. And also we have like volunteer. If anybody wanted to work with a volunteer, they can come. Number like nowadays, many, uh, many people don't work at these NGOs as they say, we don't have much time and money to spend. Yeah, it's, a, it's a great number. We respect the all. If they have like one hours, two hours, three hours, one day, two days, four days, they can come, they can teach the our children. So how often people visit your organization? So yeah. we have a volunteering uh, program basically where if any person, like if somebody is coming and doing the tour, tour with us in City Walk and if they have time, they are staying in India for six months or two months. If they have time, they can come and they can volunteer the shelter home. And from India, also a lot of students from college who wants to go in the same field like social work. So they come and they are like, we want to volunteer in the shelter home and they come and they teach children computers, English classes and a lot more things. Like dance, theater, drama, whatever they have a special skill, they can share with the children. Yeah. So, so mean. Sorry. Uh, hello. So, so this means in the, the organization is teaching the students so many things and they are also teaching the self, self defense and all these things, right? Yes, yes. yes. So that's, that's really good thing because, because uh, as I'm also um, in, the, in past, I learned um, the, all about this self defense and all these things. And this also may really may make me happy, and the all uh, all visa, all viewers also make them happy too. <laughs> That's really a nice thing. So I hope many are going to get inspired through the session. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> it was an, indeed an amazing session. Yeah. Thank you so, so much. So, so would you like to conclude it? Sorry. Any special message to the audience? So the message would be that um, thank you so much for yeah. asking us to come here. It was lovely talking about everything and then you provided very good questions to us. Thank you so much to both of you also and to all the viewer, viewers. So and would you like to? Yeah, so thank you so much viewers and also sir, ma'am, for giving this opportunity to speak. Yeah. And thank you so much to uh, change makers. Yeah, in, it, it was really it, it was really an honor to um, have have you or uh, have you both in our session. So so we really hear and learn more so more so many things which really enhance our thinking and and in future of course many people will also join like these NGOs and all. It's it was really inspiring. Thank, Thank you, you so much, sir. Hope a good future.